Peter Heiss. Working harder. Lending smarter. So I was with the with the client today and trying to decide which direction to go um, loan wise. Where are FHA limits? Loan limits for FHA are around us are about two hundred seventy one thousand fifty dollars. So two seventy one is the, is the loan amount. We need three and a half percent down. Three and a half percent down payment minimum means that max they could probably buy around here is two hundred eighty two or three thousand. Okay, and and if if there's any kind of cash flow problem, basically we could ask the sellers to to pay their closing costs. So all they really need is three and a half percent down. They could probably buy with a little over the three and a half percent down with a few hundred bucks. Okay, um, and and if they, if they you know little little higher loan limit we would go conventional we need five percent down if we go conventional minimum down payment is going to be five percent okay um and 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 that would go up to the jumbo limit which is well top end of the conventional loan would be four hundred seventeen thousand in our area okay okay and um so you know i think everybody i think the perception out there is you have to have 20 percent down to avoid uh, mortgage insurance is, is that always the case? Not true. Um, well, there's always going to be some kind of mortgage insurance unless you do a second lien, but there's a lot of ways to avoid the monthly mortgage insurance by paying a, a single premium mortgage insurance. Up. So that that's going to be an additional closing cost, or I, I remember a deal that you did for us where the, we did the interest rate slightly higher, but you were able to give them a, a lender credit to cover that. Is, is, that, is that a possibility or we roll it in? What, what do you think is the best way? Somebody has to pay for it, so it's either going to be the buyer, the seller, or the lender. Okay. Well, I, I think it makes sense to, you know, try to, try to cover all that. And I, I think everybody sleeps better with some money in the bank. I know I do. So, you know, I think, uh, I think we just have the, you know, have the seller make the contribution to closing costs. And so it seems like I've had a few clients lately that have gone from contract to contract. They've, they've tried to buy several houses before they've had success. What, what do you attribute that to these days? We're actually after, you know, after five years of pretty difficult market, we're, we're actually beginning a, a bit of a seller's market, especially in the good school districts, $500,000 and down. If, if the house is ready to sell, it's price right, we're seeing multiple offers. We haven't seen that in a while. So what are people doing to make sure that they're getting the house that they want? The, you know, the real key is, is writing. Everybody has access to plenty of information these days. So look at the comparables, write a respectable offer. <clears throat> they're not gonna give their house away. You're not gonna give your house away. Um, but write something that's realistic, you know, we are, we're always going to try to be aggressive for the buyers and we're going to try to be aggressive for the sellers, but it's, it's a bit of a seller's market. So if you come across one that you really love, you better, you know, you better write a pretty good offer. If you're more of a deal driven buyer, then you can afford to write, you know, some aggressive low ball offers and, and you know take your chances be prepared to wait a little bit be prepared to wait yes. so the market's pretty hot out there and uh, so how many how many listings do you guys have out there right now i think i think we've been over 200 most of the season um we we have about 64 under contract right now the highest um, about a month ago we had 98 under contract at the same time so you can imagine Things were a little bit hectic around here. Lots of, lots of inspections. Lots of calls to our lenders. Is that uh, is the reason why you've got 64 instead of 98? Because you sold all those houses so fast. We we had we had a slight lull when uh, anytime school lets out, there's a little bit of a break. About two weeks when school starts, there's about a two week break, and and so we'll you know they're they're rolling back in. I expect us to have right around 100 under contract um, in the near future. It seemed like last year at this time we didn't really have a, a, a school break. Do you, do you see it happening this year? 
Well, normally I'm used to telling everybody that we're going to be busy March to Halloween. Last year it got busy in November, as you know, and it's never slowed down. So for the foreseeable future, you know, while interest rates are down below four, I think it's going to stay busy. I think it's going to stay real busy. Seems like uh, every so often out there we, we get clients that come back to me and, and we have to rescue their loans because they've gone out somewhere and something's gone wrong. What's your, your team's experience working with these other internet web-based lenders? Well, I think, I think what the problem is, is, is those guys who are used to loans in other parts of the country, as, well, you, you're the lender, you, you know that Texas is unique, our title companies are unique. For whatever reason, the lenders from out of state just don't seem to do a good job here. So people go on, they see a teaser rate on the internet, and, you know, it, it, it looks an eighth of a point better than somebody that they just talked to here, and so they run with them. And of course, it never closes, and we have to call you in to rescue the deal. So, Pete, at what point, in, you know, you need a certain amount of information from people. At what point are they endangering the close date by not getting you what you need? How, I mean, how many days do we need to have every piece of documentation into you so that, so that you can submit it to underwriting? We like to have everything back in 72 hours or sooner if possible. Really, the client makes their, their deal up front by how fast they can respond. Uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like baking a cake. I mean, you can't put the cake in the oven without the flour in it. So if I've got 23 out of the 24 ingredients, what's that cake going to look like trying to add something in at the end? What, so, so tax returns, paycheck stubs, all the, you know, all the different requirements. When you have to ask somebody for something later on in the process, uh, that's, uh, that's usually an underwriting giving you a condition based on the information that you've already given them. Generally, when we get somebody's information up front, there's probably going to be another follow-up round of, of needs, potentially based on what we see. Now, sometimes when we go and we get on the other side of the underwriting uh, process, the underwriter asks for something that we, we don't have, and we have to go back to the borrower at that point. I just, I just closed a deal today where somebody had gotten money from their mother and, and put it in the checking account. It actually closed, caused a problem. Why is that? I mean, it's, it's her account. Why, why was that a problem? Everything, everything needs to happen up front. The underwriter wants to know, we, we, we baked that cake, they want to know where the flour came from. They want to make sure the flour is good flour. So if somebody goes and they get money from somebody else, Fannie Mae says you have to have X amount of dollars to, of your own money to qualify for this loan. And if, if, if you get it from somebody else, it might, it might not meet guidelines. So they just don't want to come in from an unknown source or if it's, so if it's in the last 30 days, we're going to have to prove where it came from, last 90 days. Think, when, think, when about, we... think about this. I mean, your, your client got a, a 30 to 40 day window where everything is going to get scrutinized in there. So everything needs to be documentable at that point. And if it's not, then we face challenges trying to, to show where things came from, where money was moved around from, and who it was. And, what am I going to need? What am I going to need? Cash reserve. So above and beyond my down payment, what what do I need to think about having in the bank as far as cash reserves? Really, that depends on the on the client and what kind of loan they're doing. If they're putting less than twenty percent down, there could be a requirement to have some extra money lying around. And really, a lot of it just depends on what Fannie Mae approval says when we run their their file through their automated system. It's all driven by what they ask for. So, in, in trying, to, trying to think about how to make these videos more fun to watch, I um, thought maybe we'd try a little Boston Legal style, uh, you know, banter back and forth. And, you know, the only thing I can remember is sleepover.